Hi everybody. Hi everybody. I got Warman's Antique American Games here. 1804 40 to 1940. First edition. It has all kinds of neat little games on here. In here. It's even got a price list. Thing is, this thing is as old as me, so it's 32 years old, so it's kind of I don't know what word you'd use, but out of print, out of date. Um, um, but the pictures are cool, and there's a nice little guidebook for everything. This is the first price guide devoted exclusively to games. Collecting American board games is attracting much attention today. When I was born, the year I was born, what is what they said about it. Collectors see in them a reflection of the times when families gathered in parlors pursued themes based on current historical events such as the Spanish-American War, the new motor car, great expectations, and even the popular radio programs of the 1930s. Warman's Antique American Games 1840-1940 is the first comprehensive listing of a board games played prior to World War II. Some games are so familiar that they are considered classics such as Monopoly, Scrabble, and Parcheesi, and Flinch. Many other games are forgotten and no longer played, but are sought avidly by collectors. Almost every collecting category has a game associated with it. Some of the most common themes are advertising. Airplanes, movies, radio, sports, trains. Moreover, the brilliant and colorful lithograph engraced the boxes, and boards range from sophisticated art designs such as Art Deco to the portrayal of ethnic civilizations. Some of the special features around this game is that there's more than 600 detailed photographs of games, including 8 fully color pages. More than 100 game manufacturers represented. Specific information on how to display, restore, and store games. How-to hints for buying and selling games. Fully indexed and extensive bibliography. Lee Dennis is well qualified to complete this guide. Her vast collection, which has been turned into a private museum at the Game Preserve in Petersboro, New Hampshire, has been found featured in McCall's, the Christian Science Monitor, Country Living, and American Magazine. Her articles about games have appeared in Yankee Hobbies, Early American Life, and Collections Illustrated. Cover by Jaron O'Brien. Photographs by RVL Rinker. ISBN catalog 0-911594-08-6. So, let's check it out. I'm just going to... Show this off. Look at... I'm mainly just going to try to... Show off the pictures for the most part. This game is 32 something years old, so I hope it's okay to film this. I'm filming it anyway, whether it's okay or not. Um, I don't know why it would be wrong, but here's, but uh, maybe. Don't know what the censorship rules are. But mainly I like the pictures, so. Plus it should be fine. It's 32 years old already. I just think it's kind of awesome that they have this. I think it's awesome that this exists and that there's all these board games out there. 
And uh, a guy who will really appreciate this and enjoy this is Norm of the Board Game Museum. Uh, he, uh, I will put a link to his, um, YouTube channel in my, uh, in the description. Um, and, uh, I'll probably share this video with him. I bet he would get a kick out of this book. I know I do. People who love board games probably get a kick out of this book. Uh, these are these are more than just vintage. These are antique. Pre-World War II games. These old games had great, I mean, games now they still have great art, but these games, these games back in the day had some nice art on some of them. Simpler times, simpler times, I guess, simpler times. Well, just a different world. It wasn't just a different time. So when we, where we come, but it's a different world. Not just a different time when we were boys and girls. It's not just a different place, it was a different world. I'm 32 and I still enjoy board games. I never really got into video games. I know these modern generations all into video games and all into phones and technologies and live streaming and all that mess. But don't get me wrong, I like technology. But nothing beats good old fashioned hard work, sitting down and nothing beats good old fashioned hard work, sitting down with friends and family and enjoying a good old board game or two. I mean, you actually get to play these with people that you get to see and interact with. You don't know who you're... Um, Talking to online, you don't know if they, who they are, you don't know what they are in real life, but when you can see someone face to face, stare them down, negotiate deals, see how it goes when you attack their forces or whatever. That's when you see someone's true colors, when the claws come out, man. That's what board games are all about. Some of them are cooperative. Some of them are combative. Some of them are just trivia questions. Or acknowledging, or knowledge uh, about stuff. Some of them are... They're just... 
Some of them are hard. Some of them are easy. Some of them are complicated. As they all get out. But you see how how what you see all about a real person when you sit down with them and play a game. Are they the qu quitter type? Are they the easy type? Are they the hard type? Are they the never give up, never surrender type? Are they the one that's going to fight you tooth and nail to try to win? Are they? Does their competitive nature come out? Their real nature shows when you sit down with some people playing some board games. I mean, just chess and checkers. Uh, you can them two games just alone. Some of the oldest games in history of games. You can see how just some of the old games, just like marbles and stuff. You can learn a lot more from a person playing a game than you probably could on a, asking them 20 questions about their life story. This is how I feel. But you don't know nothing about the people that you are playing a video with online. You don't know nothing about the people that you're watching YouTube video of or watching a live stream of they not might not be being themselves on the live stream they might just be doing it to try to get money or something people aren't always real people have alternative motives me I try to be real I try to be real about everything I do. That's why I just up front and honest and tell the truth how I see it. If I'm going too fast, y'all can uh, pause something if you see something that you think's pretty cool. Trying not to go too fast, but I don't want to stay on uh, something too long because there's some of them. I actually have those. I don't want to stay on something too long because they might somebody might say I'm violating some copyright or whatever I kind of don't see how I mean I've seen people film and live stream whole entire freaking television t shows and post whole entire episodes on of TV shows on their live streams. I've seen them do it on their YouTube videos. And I mean, at most, what is YouTube going to do? Demonetize the video? Now, I don't understand this demonetizing stuff I think it's just a way for them to scam people out of not having to pay them money for putting commercials on the popular sites I mean that's really uh, truly I think that's the only reason YouTube demonetizes people because it's a violation of people's freedom of speech and um, it's a violation of
you know, I mean, it's a violation of freedom of speech. I mean, come on. Now, I mean, if they were legitimately stealing somebody else's work and using that to try to get popular, you know, violating copyright laws and infringements or whatever, that would be different, but... I mean... I'd love to get a, mo a newer copy, or a, like an updated copy, like a 2019, 2020 version of this. If they still make it, of course. Maybe I'll look it up. Um, I think what I'm doing is considered fair use policy. I'm not sure what the laws are. So... I mean, I'm not trying to steal this person's works. There's some museums you can go to. Right there. I'd love to go to these museums. One's in Canada, one's in New Hampshire, one's in Washington, D.C. There's the bibliography. The index... Mormons and antiques and their prices. There's other books you can buy. I'm pretty sure there's a website now you can probably go to and buy this stuff. But that's been our Mormons Antique American Games. Very first edition copy too, which is pretty cool. Um, from 1840 to 1940. Um, remember... I uh, hope you enjoyed this little book. And uh, I got a couple of the games in here. Not many of them. I got a few. Um, and uh, if you have any of the games in any of this book or real old book, I would love to hear from you. I'd love you to comment it down below in the... Um, in the uh, thing and go check out norm of the board game museums channel too he's uh he's do all the time doing awesome cool uh game uh reviews about board games and um they're really nice they're cool i like his reviews he's a pretty cool guy i've never met the guy but uh from watching his videos and seeing them i think he's uh would be a pretty neat guy to sit down and play some board games with um Another guy, too, this is Matt, Matt Wolf, Wim, Wimixinson or something. He does Star Wars stuff, but he also does some board games, too. He's a pretty cool guy, but I'm not sure. He's more modern games. Well, Norm of the Board Game Museum is more uh, vintage and antique-type games. Um, all in all, I'll put Norm's link in the description. And uh, remember, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And Jesus loves you. And keep on gaming. And uh, keep on collecting. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And everybody have a great, wonderful day. And uh, comment down below your favorite board game. Comment down below um, any antique game you got. Any vintage game you got. Uh, comment down below if you found one. Uh, you can even DM me pictures. Pictures would be cool. I'd, I'd way appreciate pictures. PM, DM, whatever me. Pictures here on YouTube of any uh, antique board games you got. If you have any questions about them. And I will gladly answer you. You can friend me. You can subscribe to my channel. Um, and more. Uh, so uh, have a great day. And I'm signing off right now.